Hi. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at how to record your planned shots, how to save them into projects, how to edit them and then how you can share that information. So to start off we're going to use another area in Colorado. Um, so I'm going to search for a place called Ward. There we are, here's Ward. It's a, it's a mountain town. It sits right on a road called the uh, Peak to Peak Highway and from there there is a very nice uh, scenic area called Brainerd Lake um, where there are a lot of alpine lake environments and mountains all sorts of things good things to, to photograph so we'll use that for a couple of examples and the first shot I'm going to set up is from Brainerd Lake itself there's a parking area just here and uh, let me get the get the camera sort of in the right place so here on the south side of the lake there is uh, a bridge you can stand and overlook the lake and if I zoom out a little bit you'll see here is the the Continental Divide um, this range is called the Indian Peaks very nice uh, spectacular range of mountains so there is a nice wide-angle shot you can take from the lake itself Let me see if I can just adjust that there we go that's that's nice so you can see here you're standing on the lake shore you're uh, shooting West, it's a good morning shot, and you have all these uh, peaks in in your shot. So, I'll not do too much detailed planning around the shot itself, but uh, this gives you gives you the idea. Um, and what we can do is adjust the setup. Now, once we have that exactly how we want it, we've got our camera selected, we've got our lens selected, we have the focal length set. So we're going to go a pretty wide angle on that relatively wide angle I guess for, for this particular camera and lens. You can also choose the camera orientation whether you want it portrait or landscape just by toggling with that button right there. This will do as a landscape shot so let's work out how do we save that. To save your shots to a shot list do you use this button up here on the top left and we have something called projects and what I'm going to do is create my own project for this illustration and we're going to call it Indian Peaks forgive the slow typing today here we go Indian Peaks and save that so it creates the new project it goes straight into it and then we have an option here to add a new shot so I will do that add new shot and I'm going to call it uh, from Brainerd Lake. And that will do nicely. Um, now you can also see here we have a couple of other options. I'll come back to those in a second. Let me just save that first first off. There we go. So I click done, I come back out. There's the shot. It's saved in our project called Indian Peaks. I can come back out to our project list. There's the project and there's the shot that we just added. And you can see also that with that now saved, the title here at the top says Indian Peaks from Brainerd Lake. So that's project name followed by the shot name. If I go back into the list, once you have the shot selected, which it currently is, I can click the button here, come in and look at the shot details. And I can edit those. And one of the things I can do is to put in a reference URL, so that might be a link to, to a web page. So to do that, I'm just going to go and copy the link, and we'll take the uh, link to the, the home page for the Brainerd Lake Recreation Area from the Forest Service web page, which happily is up and running today. Um, so I'm going to select that, copy, cancel, come back to the app. I can come in here in there and paste and that's that link saved and with that in place I can click and it takes me back there so that's just a useful way to save a link in addition I can edit the shot and I can choose an image a reference image from the photo library on your device and you can see there is a photo from the uh, Forest Service page so I'll pop that in there I can make some notes some notes save all that and there is our completed shot with reference URL image notes so 
The next thing that we might want to do, let's say we want to fine tune this shot a little bit. So I'm going to actually make it completely wide angle at the limit of the lens to 14 millimeters. When I made that change, you'll see that a little asterisk has appeared up here to the next to the title, and that shows you that the shot has been edited. So if we want to save the change, you can just come back in, click the title again, and discard or save the changes. So I'll save the change. The asterisk goes away, and we're done. If we're finished with that shot, we close it using this button here. And now it's closed. The setup hasn't changed, but now I'm not editing that saved shot any any longer. So just to complete this, let's let's set up one more shot and add that to the list. There is another very pretty lake up here called Lake Isabel. Um, and I know because I've been there that there is a, a nice shot that you can take. Actually, it's not so much there. It's, it's sort of this way to to the northwest. Um, and I really want the camera positioned by that little outlet there because you can get a nice shot with foreground in. Um, so there it is. There's the shot. I'm actually going to make that a portrait shot. So you see how the field of view came in as I rotated the camera into portrait mode. So there's our shot. Happy with that. We do edit, add new shot, and we'll call this uh, Lake Isabel. This is a very uh, pretty location at the height of summer when the wildflowers are out. So there we go. So now we have two shots. You'll see that the icon shows the orientation, whether it's a landscape or a portrait image. And one other thing you can do, if you were planning an excursion where you had a number of shots that you planned through a day or a multi-day trip or even a, a shoot in a, in a city, for example, you can put these in the correct sequence. I go into Edit and using these little controls here, I can say, well, actually, I'm going to do that one first. Or you can drag it back the other way like that, and it will save the, the order of the shots. Um, Finally, for this tutorial, let's show how you can share some of this information. The button up here, uh, the Actions button, has a number of options. I'm not going to cover all of them today, but a couple that I will show you. First one is Email Shot. If I click that, it'll use the current shot and put all the details that you need into, um, into an email. So you can see here it's got the title. It's got some links where you can open this in the browser in Safari using the website or open it back up in Photo Transit or TP on your um, iPad or iPhone. In addition, it has the camera and the lens details with the name, uh, the portrait, the, zoo, the, the lens that you have, the focal length, the position for the shot, where the, where the camera is going to be, where the subject is, where you've tilted the camera. We'll come on to that in a separate uh, tutorial and camera elevation, subject elevation above the ground. Again, we'll look at those in a bit more detail in a separate uh, tutorial. There's a screenshot showing you how it looks, and there's also a KML file uh, that you can use to import into your favorite GPS app uh, or into Google Earth, whatever you want to do. We'll show some more on that in another um, tutorial as well. And that was the individual shot, but in addition to that, with a shot open from the project, the Indian Peaks project, where we have the two shots we've done, I can also do email the project. That then includes all of these details. It's got the branded lake shot with the reference URL, the details. It's got Lake Isabel with the details. We don't put a screenshot in for every uh, shot because that would make for an extremely large email. Um, it shows you the, the equipment list that you're going to need based on what was used in the shots in the project and it again includes a whole project KML with details for all of the shots in one single KML file. And finally, if you want to schedule when you want to take this shot, you can add it to your calendar using this option. I'm going to give access to the calendar. It puts in an appointment name, a location using the coordinates, and it also gives you a link, which is uh, a short link to the sharing website where you can view the details for the shot, even if you don't have the app to hand. So that's a useful reference to have uh, in your calendar. So that's it for today. That's how to set up uh, projects, how to create your shot lists in projects, and how to uh, edit and export them. Hope that's useful, and hope you enjoy using Photo Transit. Thank you.